The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and recently Seakeeper, the company that stabilizes all our boats, has come out with a new model, their smallest yet as a matter of fact, the Seakeeper 1. It's good for boats from 23 to 30 feet, and we're going to put it through its paces today on a Sea Hunt Gamefish 27. First, let's talk about the installation, and then we'll get out in the water. Now, a couple of key features about this unit. First of all, it's 12 volt, not 110. So much like the Seakeeper 2 and the Seakeeper 3, it can be put on smaller installations. But what's really unique about this is unlike the Seakeeper 2 on up to 35, this is the only one that has a flat base. Part of the gyro stabilizing dome doesn't come out underneath it. So it can be flush mounted onto the deck. Now the whole unit itself weighs 365 pounds max. There's a 128 pound flywheel inside. So that's really all we have to concern ourselves with as far as mounting it. The way this one is mounted, because we have a strong deck, is they just took an aluminum plate and put it on a half inch of plexus, which is an adhesive. Then you just drill and tap and you're good to go. The way this boat is configured, it's got four batteries. Two for the engine start batteries, two for the house and it would normally have three, but this one's got a windlass on it, so that's your four batteries. Now, all we had to do to put the Seakeeper in was install a fifth battery system and an 80 amp breaker just behind. The last item that got added was a 100 amp Dolphin battery charger, and that's on the options list for this boat anyway. Other than that, it's the simple electrical connection, water lines for cooling, one coming in, one going out, and then a NEMA 2000 line. What do we need that for? Well, let's take a look at the dash. The Seakeeper interface works with either Garmin, Simrad, or Raymarine. Here we have it on a Garmin display. It's very basic. We've got a meter showing the roll angle, the on-off switch, and the lock button. Right now it's active. We can also push that and lock the unit. So now I can actually roll the boat back and forth and then stabilize it right away. Now, in addition to showing the roll angle digitally, we can also show it as a moving line that gives us roll from one side to the other, both up and down, much like an oscilloscope would. So if I turn the unit off, if I lock it in place and start rolling the boat, let's get some good roll going on here. Now you can see how the line's going up and down from one side to the other. And if I unlock the unit and put it back into active, Look at how quickly it stabilizes the boat. We also have controls underneath. The tool gives us the RPMs, the gyro angle, our current that's drawing, and our battery voltage. Information gives us the serial number. More importantly, the run hours and the sea hours. The reason we have a difference between run hours and sea hours is the warranty is based on sea hours not the run time it takes to get up to speed and stabilize. It's sea hours. What's the warranty? Two years or 2,000 hours. We can control the controller brightness and the sea keeper brightness, and then back to the home page showing the exact number that we're rolling. Now, all of the units above sea keeper one also come with a five inch display that's gotta be somewhere on the boat, and that serves as the unit that gives information to the main screen. With the Seakeeper 1, you don't need that. You can still get it, but you don't need that. So where does this get its information from? The connect box right on the unit itself. With a planing hull like this, they recommend that it be put anywhere from midship aft. And why is that? Well, because if you put it midship forward, the pounding of the boat will add a lot of wear and tear on it, and that's just not necessary. Now, as far as being on the center line, well, again, on a boat like this, center line is really the only place that you can put it. But on any installation from number one on up to 35, it can go anywhere on the boat. Side to side, you can have it offset a fuel tank from one side to the other. It does not have to be on the center line. It still works. The really interesting aspect, it's just as effective on the deck as it is in the hull attached to the stringers. It takes about 15 minutes to spool up to 80% power and 100% power is 28 minutes. So once it spools up to 9750 RPM, the current drops down. Why is that? because the gyro is in a helium vacuum, so it's a frictionless environment inside there. That gives us our speed and the low amp draw. So how does a gyro work? Well, here's a smaller version spinning at 12,000 RPM. If I apply a little pressure on it, notice that it counters 90 degrees to that force. What Seakeeper does is they put 
pneumatic cylinders on it to stop it at 70% because once you go past 70% it's not effective anymore. And notice too that it only controls side to side movement. It does nothing for pitch. So another question we get, is it maintenance free? Well, the answer to that is no. Nothing mechanical is maintenance free ever. This one annually, they recommend that you do the glycol for the cooling, the hydraulic fluid for the rams, and the bushings. And of course, at every annual inspection, also check the wiring. Our sea keeper is built for the long haul. Well, let's take a look inside this Blue Water 35. This one's got 4,000 hours of research and development testing on it, getting it beat up in every situation that they can possibly put it through, and it's still in excellent condition. No welds breaking, no stress cracks, nothing. So let's get out on the water and put all this into practice. Of course, it was relatively calm, so the first thing we did was have one of the Seakeeper demo boats make some wakes for us with our gyro in the locked position, clearly having us rolling. Then we activated the stabilizer and did it again. Now she remains stable. So stable, in fact, that I can stand on the foredeck as the wake hits us. Underway, the boat will still have the same rolling into the turn characteristics as normal. The gyro won't stop that from happening, so we maintain normal performance. It also won't stop pitch, remember. There isn't even a difference in speed between having the unit active and locked. But where there is a difference is in crossing wakes. Gyro off, we roll all the way across. With it on, we're stable. And this will be the case when running through beam seas. Even straight ahead in comp seas, the ride was much gentler. Now, Seakeeper is a company that's been around for about 15 years. They started with the M7, and that was actually my first boat review 12 years ago for BoatTest.com. Back in those days, they were selling 12, 15 a year. Now, 2,800 a year, and it shows no sign of slowing down. And that's my full review of the new Seakeeper One. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you comfortably on the water.